and start uh, centres around New Zealand. The main thing we're looking for is someone who can, who can be a centre leader, who can coordinate between the other facilitators and, and just network with the community organisations and hold it together. And you have to have a really real fire uh, and a passion um, for that. And basically, um, that's what we're asking tonight is if you know anyone that maybe be interested in, in um, helping to facilitate, we're doing a training on Saturday, uh, it's free training uh, through the day. If anyone wants to know someone or wants to come along, um, so please you know, give me a yell. But we're going to introduce Brian. Brian is the um, facilitator of Rotorua. He's um, someone that has that passion. So please give it a warm welcome to Brian. Thank you. Quite exciting for me, as uh, this is a great passion of mine, and uh, I will tell you a little bit about my past history. I've been involved in men's work for uh, 24, 25 years now, and uh, when I retired down here to Rotorua uh, eight years ago, I still had this urge to get men's groups going, and I could see the need for it here. Uh, so, a little bit of background into me. Uh, can go a long way back now at my stage, but we won't go that far back. Um, I was I was actually at a conference for um, DSAC, Doctors for Sexual Abuse Fair, and I was running a support group for uh, sexually abused men through Men's Line at Lifeline in Auckland, and they asked me to uh, open conference with my story and it was at Auckland University. I had a, a focus that particular conference for the first time on male survivors of sexual abuse and um, they brought an expert out from LA. This, he started talking about men with male survivors and started with three words, guilt, shame and fear. And I wonder how Many men in this room resonate with those words. They really got at me, and I came to realise that that was my life up until 50 when I learned that. And I started a process um, of doing self awareness programs and dealing with these issues. I found myself in front of the boss of the key seminars and the head facilitator on the Saturday morning before we started the uh, day's work and uh, saying, what about men? Why aren't we doing something for men? And I got the usual resistance come up around men's issues. And I heard myself saying, well, I'm going to do something about it. And I really couldn't quite believe I was saying this, but this is where I got my passion for it. And um, so I started a training uh, to be a counsellor to work on men's issues. And uh, it was quite an easy transition, actually, because I was a hairdresser. And I found that uh, you get a lady in the chair with your hands on her head, and she soon starts telling you all about her life. And I was actually starting to counsel my class. So it was an easy transition over to training uh, to be a counsellor. And I opened a practice in Ponsonby, um, specialising in men's issues and uh, sexually abused men. And <clears throat> this is something that society finds difficult to handle. It's out there. A lot of it. It's not just men that are sexually abused. Sexual abuse is not a gender issue, it's a power over issue. So I started up a group through key seminars uh, for men getting together and meeting and um, showed a video that I had got from the States that was made by uh, Robert Bly. He started a lot of men's work in the States and he wrote a lot of books on it and so on. And he produced this video, and so um, I got a group of men together and we sat around and watched the video. And then sat around the circle and talked about it. 
And the biggest comment that hit me out of that was one chap said, well, I thought I had lots of mates on the rugby field, in the soccer club, down at the off club, on the golf course, in the pub. <coughs> but I realise now, I really don't have any real friends. And that is where men were. Um, no one they can really turn to, really talk to. And it was then heightened again, and this is 30 years ago, um, I was hosting a party at my apartment, and a uh, chap came with his wife, and for some reason he felt comfortable to come <coughs> up and speak to me uh, openly, and he said, I really envy my wife, the relationship she has with her girlfriend. He said, I want that with a male, male friend. And I think it still happens. When crisis happens for men, uh, between a man and a woman, the woman is there with casseroles and, and support and help and, and keep her going. The men run. They don't know how to cope. They don't know how to support the guy, and the guy is left on his own. And this is my passion for men's work, to get men to open up and be supportive and learn how to support one another. It was really exciting to spend the weekends with these guys who really had no idea what they were coming to. Some came of their own. Some were told they should do it by the wife. Some were referred from doctors and therapists. And um, I just loved watching them on Friday night and then seeing them on Sunday night when they, the course was finishing. And the change in their face and their body language was just magic. I think these men's issues go back several generations. Robert Bly wrote about the fact that he believed they went back to the Industrial Revolution where father left the land and family and went to work in the um, factories and offices. Also, the mentoring of men got lost. There used to be rituals. It was about the men taking them away <coughs> and teaching boys. But that's been lost in our society uh, for several generations. And I think it's been really interesting lately with the, the recent celebrations <coughs> of um, and commemorations of Anzac Day and the 100 years. And when you see um, if you've seen any of the really good television programs that have been on about it, they very graphically show the horror that our men went through. And the way they were so strongly taught, be strong, push it down, don't show any emotion, don't show any tears, don't show anything. And, they've had to, and my father, my grandfather, and my father lived with that. And I think that's created this culture of where men can't really talk to one another and get support from one another. So that's my passion, that's my background, and I'm really excited that you're here tonight and that uh, we can get some men's groups going in Rotorua. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. And what's, what's is, is great is that when we start in the centre, um, I'm lucky because I get to meet some really great people and Brian's become a really good mate um, to me and I really, really appreciate that. He's got some really special gifts that he can offer people. And um, so thank you, Brian. Thank you. Um, and the, the whole thing about mates, you know, like Brian was saying, is, is you know, that ends that tradition when these guys are out in war and battle and you just don't leave your mate behind. You know, you, you pull through and then when your mate's in trouble, you're there for him. You know, it's just that simple concept. This is how uh, this has been carved, especially for us. And um, I'd like to go through and explain every uh, carving and tradition, but we haven't got time. It's very special. It's got a story behind it. And this is uh, the talk we're talking about the gift to men, which actually gives them a space to talk and allows them, for sometimes the first time in their life, to be heard. And that's very powerful. So I'll just present this. This is the Rotorua Tara Toko Toko. <laughs> 